Hello Facebook, this is Kim aka Spartan Stitcher on Instagram. I am back again with floss tube number 31. Today is the 26th day of August, the first full week of school back uh, here in North Dakota. Um, so I'm excited both my girls are in school. I get because my youngest daughter is only it's it's three hour a day, four days a week in home preschool. But because it's in the afternoon, it only overlaps with my oldest daughter. She gets out of school before my youngest does, so I get an hour and 50 minutes of free time to do what I need to do. That's just enough to go to the commissary and buy groceries, uh, get some exercise, put do a video and upload it, or, you know, little little chunks of things that I can do. I can't drive to town and go run an errand because that's, that's too much. I wouldn't get, get back in time. But I get a little bit of time to myself. So let's talk about, <coughs> excuse me, what I stitched this past week. Okay, so in the School of Magical Stitches and Literature, it was week eight, uh, which was bulletin board notices. We had to stitch on our 11th whip in our whip album to represent the 11 Death Eaters that were captured at the Ministry of Magic. Um, we had to stitch on something that was not pink for uh, the fact that Professor Umbridge was no longer in charge of the school. And bonus points if you did something that represented the joke that the Weasley twins pulled on the fifth floor at Hogwarts, which of course is the swamp that they, that they set up. So I was able to do all three tasks on one piece, which is my 11th whip in my whip album, Big Red Ship of Life by Ink Circles. I'm up here on page three. I already had the border done, so it was time to do some of this fill-in work. So I did 300 stitches for the 11th whip, 300 stitches for no pink, and 400 stitches for the swamp task because of the alligator looking thing and all the other animals down there. So there's where I'm at. So nice amount done to fill in page three and I'll be able to do the rest of the fill in in September since I'm doing one page every three months. And of course this is in DMC 3808 which means it's not pink. So and this is a 28 count one over one mushroom uh, even weave by MCG Textiles. So I like how it's coming together. That was done on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, so after I finished that, I started working on Camelot again on Tuesday and I worked on nothing but Camelot Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Wait, did I suppose it's Saturday? No, yeah, so those four days. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I worked on nothing but Camelot and I decided to, to do the lazy daisies and do the back stitching so I'd have that part done because stitching the night is kind of like a known quantity. I would I knew how much I could get done and how fast that went. I wanted to get the unknown stuff out of the way. I also beaded the top part that was accessible with how I have it in my scroll frame. So here's Camelot. This is my personal 90 day challenge to try to finish it up. So I'm up here in the gel scene. Let me focus. I have not worked on the green knight at all since I showed them to you in my last video. So I've done the lazy daisies, all these lazy daisies all the way around. I've beaded this part of the border and there's four beads in the corners of the joust border. And I've done all that backstitch for the background. I've never done Lazy Daisies before. These Lazy Daisies are in blends. They're, um, so the ones pointing up, they're like clusters of three, if I can get it close enough and get it to focus. All right, you can see there's like three petals of Lazy Daisies. The ones pointing up are in a dark green blend. The ones pointing down are in a lighter green blend. So I started with the darker green I did like one side over here and a little bit up here 
And I sent some messages with pictures to uh, Ann P of Fiber Floss and Friends, or Fiber Floss and Fiction Podcast, although Friends works as well, um, to ask her what she thought of them because she's done Lazy Basics before. And my problem was it was two strands and I couldn't get them consistent. And so I also sent a picture uh, to Jesse Marie because I did, I did like this bit with two strands then I did some up here in one strand to see what actually looked better because I was willing to change and not do as charted to make it work. Well, I decided to go with two strands and I did all the darker ones all the way around. And they were consistent, but the problem was they were too big. They were too loopy instead of more, more pointed pet petals. So then I was having a hard time fitting in the, the lighter green Lazy Daisies. So then I frogged all the darker ones again and I put them in. So, you know, Anne told me when she was, she was messing around giving me grief, she said, just do a hundred practice ones and then you'll be good. And I'm like, yeah, right. I don't have time for that. Well, guess what? I ended up doing about a hundred practice ones anyways. So Lazy Daisies are done. They're not perfect. But they're not as loopy either. Let me focus. Um, I couldn't leave the darker ones loopy because then, thanks to my husband, he said they looked pretty phallic. So I couldn't unsee that, so I had to fix them so they weren't as loopy. And so that's what took just about four days on those Lazy Daisies itself. And then a couple more days on the back stitch. So you can see the, you know, King Arthur and Guinevere are watching the jousting. So now all I have left to do is, okay, I don't know if you can see the, the gold beads in between each. It's real subtle. There's one gold bead in between each of these. So that won't take long, like maybe an hour, if that, to do the rest of the beads in the, in the, in the bottom part of this. And maybe five minutes to put in my initials and date at the bottom. So I've got six days to try to finish up this night. The problem is, now that I've, I've worked on this by itself for four days, I'm like, oh, do I have to work on it again? I concentrated too much on it. So I kind of screwed myself by setting that August goal because I had no idea the lazy daisies in the backstitch would take that long. So I'm glad I got that done first, but now it's like, okay, I've got six days to get this done and not burn myself out on it. I don't want to lose my stitchy bug just trying to meet a, a self-imposed goal. So let's we'll see what happens. Watch Instagram, watch for my video next week. You'll see if I actually finish it. Um, and then Saturday, I was like, okay, I need to need to work on something else because there's other things I want to get done by the end of the month and I need a break from doing just that. So I was talking with Anne again because you know we just bounce ideas off each other and I still had both by the numbers for full coverage fanatics that I had to fix or had to finish. I had um, in my super size chart and also Macintosh mail. So we decided on this one because it was a lower, fewer stitches that I had to do. Um, so this is for by the numbers 1200. I'm down here in the dinosaur corner and I thought I had 750 tent stitch I had to do, but it turns out when I looked at my tally sheet, I only had to do 550 tent stitches. And I was able to knock that out because I had a really good stitchy day on Saturday. I was able to knock that out all on Saturday. So by the numbers 1200, this is, was also my Woodland Creatures um, piece for full coverage fanatics because dinosaurs do live in the woods. So I got a page finish and I got my by the numbers done. So check it out. Let me focus. You can clearly tell now that's a skull. And here we got a shell. So I got two partial pages done now. 
which is really good. Um, you know, I did that page finish mania for May, and so I got a ton of pages then. But that kind of screwed me for trying to keep at least getting one page finish per month after that. I didn't get a page finish in June because everything that had pages in work was already had a page done. Um, for July, I got a page worth of stitches done on Trick or Treat because I did over 8,000 stitches. But since that one's Extreme Cross Country, it wasn't exactly a page, an official page. So I got my, a partial page done on this one and I'm really happy with the way it looks. You can see how I just randomly feather into the next page, taking each color, you know, however much of the length I have and if that color goes into the next page, that's what I do. So the next time I work on this, I'm going to go up to this page right here that the, the hand of the king is pointing at because I want to see more of the dinosaurs instead of going across. So I've taken my tension off. So this, the fabric is a little loose so it can rest until I work on it again. And then I was like, okay, well that was Saturday. That didn't take me all weekend. And um, I couldn't work on Macintosh Mail because of the homework this week in School of Magical Stitches. I didn't want to touch it. Um, so I was like, okay, what else can I work on for one day only? And I looked for my whips. And I pulled out my model stitch for my Craig Nadoon design because I knew I only had the words to go. I only had the words to do and then it would be done. So Sunday, that's what I did. I finished up the words on Craig Nadoon Travel Company will take you places. Which is just a funny word pun. If you've watched Outlander or read any of the books, you'd understand. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I don't, I can't tell if you can see it in the video, but there is variegation in those stones that um, does show up nicely. And then I used a DMC variegated for the grass and just black for the letters. So I'm not sure how I'm going to fully finish this yet. I'm thinking project bag or tote bag. I haven't measured it. it I don't think it's going to be a typical size if I wanted to frame it. So I'll figure out something else besides framing it. So there's Craig Nadu and I got another whip off my list. Okay. Um, homework this week in the School of Magical Stitches. Um, some of the prefigs were a little disappointed and some of the students may have been too that we didn't actually have any assignments related to the the battle at the Ministry of Magic uh, that happened in Order of the Phoenix. But our headmistresses have explained that it happened in the Department of Mysteries. So this week's homework is all about mystery and which one are you going to work on? Because what they did is instead of having us use our whip albums, they said make a post before the homework week starts. Put in pictures for five whips that you're willing to work on this week and we're going to randomly draw a number per house for each house. And if you post late, if you don't get your post up by the time we draw a random number that the headmistresses will draw a number specifically for you. So that's why I couldn't work on Macintosh Mill because I listed it as one of my five. I only need 1400 stitches on it and I didn't want to get to a point where I'd have to do more than that 1400 stitches if I had worked on it this weekend and had done a certain number and then have to tack on another 500 if it had been drawn uh, for Ravenclaw, which it was not. It was not drawn. Ravenclaw, uh, our number was number one. And the first whip that I put on my post, something pretty easy to knock out some stitches, is Hogwarts Travel Poster. And I have already started working on this today to try to knock out those 500 stitches, which uh, means 1,010 stitches for me. Um, this is by Country Magic Stitch and on Etsy, uh, custom order only. I always put in comments or links below if you guys don't know that. Um, so I've already started working on this today. If you see this outline, 
I'm just filling that in. It's really simple. I can watch TV and fill in at the same time. I've got 400 stitches in already, so I need 610 more. And um, I don't know if that's going to, it might be, but we'll see. If not, I'll start filling in something else or start on the uh, Hogwarts school down here. So, because that's the bottom of the design. So we'll do a thousand ten stitches, stitches on this. Work more on Camelot, Camelot, Camelot. Try to get that done. And then once Hogwarts Travel Poster is done, I've already got Macintosh Mill on the Q-Snap. And um, so I need 1,400 more stitches on this for by the numbers 2,400 because I've already done a thousand. So those three pieces are what I'm going to work on this week. Um, try to knock out, knock out those goals. We do get extra points in homework this week. If we work, uh, put in 200 stitches on the other four pieces that were not drawn. So I'll get 200 for Camelot. I'll get 200 for Macintosh Mill. But unless I meet those two goals for by the numbers and finish Camelot, I'm not going to work on the other two pieces that I have listed in my post. So, but I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, one September Sunday, so, um, or otherwise known as Return to Hogwarts Day. I'm really hoping I can finish Camelot so that I can start this piece guilt-free. Tilton Crafts Half-Blood Prince, because it is the start of year, si year six at Hogwarts for Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. This is artwork by Daniel Cordick. There's your size. 325 by 462. The nice thing about this one, it's only got 35 colors. So that means it'll go quick, right? <laughs> we shall see. I've got uh, some 25 count, easy count uh, set to go for this one. I, I still need to like measure it and put my little starting point so I know where to start on the grid. Because, you know, three inches by three inches border may not exactly match up with where the grid is on the fabric. So I always use a water-soluble marker and put a little spot. So I'm going to start this on 1 September. Fingers crossed. I really want to start this. I maybe, if I don't finish Camelot by the end of August, maybe I'll do continue on this, get the finish on the same day, and work on We'll see. We'll see. I want to start this one. Um, that's that. I got some happy mail this a couple days ago from Helen D. Flosstuber. If you uh, don't watch her videos, I recommend that you do. She had a giveaway for two copies of uh, Prairie Schooler Sweeping Cobwebs because they're starting a sal, uh, which actually started last Thursday from the... Um, the sale is being hosted by Cobweb Corner, which is an online um, LNS. So I've, I've got other Prairie Schoolers, but I've never actually stitched one. I want to start this one. I think I'm actually going to do this in individual pieces, like little ornaments. Um, so obviously not this week, unless it's the end of the week and I get everything done and I can't start half blood prints yet, but... I'm gonna, you know, this is, this is coming. I think I've got fabric that'll work. Um, so that'll be, this is the card that, that Helen sent. Just, it looks mermaid type scales. Um, so I'm gonna start with this piece with, with making them smalls. So thank you, Helen and Cobweb Corner for that. The other thing I did, I told you that I need to stitch up that uh, panda piece for my friend and for her daughter that's going to be born in October. Um, I got to the point where I bought the pattern off Etsy and I transcribed it into my stitching software, but it's pretty big. It's like 100 by 115. It's that's big and it's a lot of black because it's just it's like a panda silhouette because pandas are only white and black. But then it's it's holding a, a rainbow heart because this is a rainbow baby for her. And if you haven't heard that term before, a rainbow baby is what you call a child that you carry successfully and is born healthy after you've had losses. Whether it's miscarriage, 
um, stillborn or infant loss. So this, you know, it's another rainbow baby for her. So the panda is holding a rainbow heart. So I just need to see if I can keep the scale of the panda and kind of reduce it so then I can add the word, you know, the quote that she wants in the flower border. So now that it's the first full week of school, I had more time to do that. <sighs> okay. Now comes the, re the real, real life update that, that will affect stitching. Um, we, I didn't know for sure the last couple of weeks, so I couldn't tell you. I didn't want to, to tell you something that, that may not happen, but my husband will be deploying. Um, we've got some time, so it's not like next week he'll be deploying, but he's getting ready to deploy for six months. He's going to miss the entire winter, all the, all the holidays. Um, he, he's deploying to the desert, but it's nowhere that I need to worry about his safety. It's somewhere that I actually deployed to as a first lieutenant in 2006. Okay, so I've been there. Yes, it was 13 years ago, so it's going to be even nicer now than what it was when I went there. And it wasn't a hardship deployment. It wasn't like an austere location uh, when I was there. So I'm not going to tell you where it is or when exactly he's leaving because that would violate... OPSEC or operational security. Um, since this is a public video, anyone can watch it. I'm not going to talk about that on a public video, but he's going to be doing a, it's a, it's a good deployment, doing a good job because he's going to be filling in, um, in a Lieutenant Colonel billet. So that's going to look good on his records that he's doing a Lieutenant Colonel job. Um, he's only deployed to a tropical location before, so this will be his first real deployment in my eyes. But since the base is so much nicer, it's still, it's like I said, it's not a hardship. But it's going to be hard for my girls and for, for me just because he's going to be gone for that amount of time. The last time he deployed was when my oldest was less than a year old. So they've only been away from him besides that for maximum a month at a time. Um, so we're already talking about the grandparents, you know, someone's going to come visit over Christmas and we already have a trip, um, that I already bought airfare for and everything in November to, to fly home to Michigan. Um, and now I apparently we'll have an empty seat with us. Um, but the problem is that he has some other trips and training to do to prepare for the deployment stuff. He needs to be able to do that job. So there's going to be some other quick trips that he makes, um, either a couple days up to a week to different locations here stateside um, to get ready for that deployment. So we're going to be pretty busy in the next few months, even until he leaves. Um, yep. So, but the good news is I'm in a really good neighborhood. Everyone around me is like, okay, you let us know whatever you need. You know, I've got a snow blower, so I don't, I'm not going to have to be, you know, muscling and, and shoveling all that snow that we get this winter time. And you better believe I'm going to be giving him grief that he's going to miss another North Dakota winter. So, um, he'll be deployed for his birthday. He'll be deployed for my birthday. Um, but, uh, they do have internet there, so we'll be able to, you know, like work on FaceTime or, you know, something um Skype whatever we only just gotta gotta uh handle the time difference because it's on the other side of the world so that's happening for us let's see anything else I want to say there's um I didn't get a chance to like make project bag or anything else this week because there was only two days of school um, but I got my partial page finished and I got a model finished. So I'm guessing that kind of, you know, balances it out. So, all right, guys, have a good rest of your week. Um, oh, that's what I meant to say. Um, so most of you know that I am a prefect for Ravenclaw in the School of Magical Stitches. I'm one of the graders. Um, and I've already done some grading this morning about week eight for Hufflepuff, um, looking at what they did for the bulletin board notices. And just want to let you guys know that Facebook has tightened down on how many comments a person can make in an event. Used to be we could do about an event and a half in like a day. 
and then we'd get blocked for maybe half a day for you know four or five hours and then we could we could you know start grading again but i wasn't even able to get through an entire event this morning before facebook blocked me um and it seems like their block is lasting longer than that four or five hours so um just something to keep in mind if you do have a prefix that makes a comment on your post to ask for an update or ask a, ask a question and you reply and they don't get back to you right away it might be because they're blocked um and just wait you know give them a day and if you don't hear back you can reply usually the best way is to try to reply again in your post and that'll you know give us the notification that you replied um there was one uh lisa um we made an error in her grading for a different week a few days ago and for some reason i wasn't getting the facebook notifications and eventually i did and so i was able to go back and correct it so we can always go back and correct it so just keep trying if you can't get a hold of us or if nothing else go to your common room contact one of your own pre house prefix and say you know i'm having problems it's probably facebook it's probably it, you know i'm not ignoring anybody it's just facebook causing issues so um but i really enjoyed looking at everyone's uh, bulletin board notices today and we're getting ready because next week we start grading all of the extra credit for next year so all right guys have a good stitching week and we'll see you later bye